हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे वी विल लर्न फ्यू टॉपिक्स ऑफ साइंस दैट इज एम्फोटोरिक ऑक्साइड्स एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ लो रिएक्टिव मेटल्स एंड प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ आयनिक कंपाउंड्स वी हैव सीन द एम्फोटोरिक ऑक्साइड द क्वेश्चन अपियन इन द एग्जाम मेनी टाइम्स सो लेट एस लर्न इट लिटल डिटेल्स अबाउट द एम्फोटोरिक ऑक्साइड्स so what are amphoteric oxides actually you know the metal oxides metal oxides like zinc oxide copper oxide iron oxide various oxides are there so all the metallic oxides are basic in nature remember this please uh, you can write uh, a short like metallic oxide basic you know just mobile m o b you remember mobile metallic oxide basic in nature but there are certain metallic oxide see definition there are certain metallic oxide which react with both acid as well as base to form salt and water uh, for example uh, you know uh, the zinc oxide is it just take an example See these metallic oxides are basic in nature, so they react with acid to form salt and water. This is a very common. Obviously, base will react with acid to form salt and water. We know neutralization reaction. So all the metallic oxide will react with acid to form salt and water. But there are certain metallic oxide which react with both. acid as well as base to form salt and water those metallic oxides are called amphoteric oxides see the word says ampho ampho means both even you know in the previous you know, like previous class in the 9th standard we learnt about amphibians which lives both land on water both amphi means both so uh, the examples are the amphoteric oxides example like zinc oxide we have example of amphoteric oxide then we have aluminum oxide aluminum oxide even we have copper oxide these are the three examples you can remember the amphoteric oxides let us take like for example i told you the metallic oxides are basic in nature so obviously they react with acid to form salt and water so let us take you know zinc oxide we have taken it is reacting with acid obviously all metallic oxide will react with acid but there are these are will react with acid as well as base so let us balance this reaction as the chlorine is 2 so let us take 2 here so water h2 here h2 is completely balanced now let us take the zinc oxide is also reacting with the base as you know it is an amphoteric so we get na2z and o2 that is called sodium zincate sodium zincate and we get a water so we know we have na2 so we have to make it here too na2 z and o2 and this is completely balanced now you can check the balance a uh, one more example let us take aluminum al2 o3 aluminum oxide is also amphoteric so it is reacting with hydrochloric acid to form salt it is alcl3 plus water uh, cl3 is a, so let us try to balance cl3 as al2 we have so we have to balance here 2 so 2 al balance 2 3 are 6 so it will become 6 hcl we need to make it 6 hcl and this is h6 became so 3 h2o so 3 oxygen and 3 oxygen is completely balanced now again it is reacting with acid so it react with the base also al2o3 and react with the base like naoh we get naalo2 sodium aluminate sodium aluminate that is called sodium yeah sodium aluminate and as you know the water will come out yani alo2 so you know here al2 is obviously we have to balance the two years so it becomes 2al 2na so here you have to give 2 so 2na got balanced 2 2 is a 4 plus 1 5 oxygen 3 plus 2 5 oxygen 3 or uh, okay two hydrogen and completely balanced reaction so hope you understood amphoteric oxide the oxide which react with both acid as well as base to form salt and water metallic oxide normally basic but there are certain metallic oxide 
which react with both acid as well as base. So it means they act as acid as well as base. There are certain metallic oxides we have. Next, extraction of low reactive metals. Low reactive metals. See, the low reactive metals, we have the uh, mercury, we have copper, various reactive metals we have. And you know the low reactive metals, they exist in sulphide form. They exist only in sulphide form. And, in, and you, you know, in previous video, we learned that uh, sulphide ore, the sulphide ore will undergo roasting. So let us take, like this is mercuric sulphide. It is heated in the presence of air, that is oxygen. So that is heated, so it is called roasting. We get a mercuric oxide and plus sulphur dioxide. See, the ore of in mercury is called cinnabar. We call cinnabar, mercuric sulphide. And let us balance two, and here we have three, so we have to balance. If we give it two, so we get a mercury two, sulphur will get two, so, you know, sulphur two, 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 the four, oxygen plus two, six, so three, two, the six. And this mercuric oxide you know, without reducing it, as a low reactive metal, so the binding, the bonding is not too strong. Even just by heating, uh, will cause a reduction. So we get mercury metal and oxygen liberated. So just give two here. Let us let us take one more example. Like copper sulfide is undergo roasting to give copper oxide Cu2O. This is called copper glands also. Remember the ore of copper, copper glands, C2O plus sulfur dioxide. The balancing will be the same like, you know, in a mercuric oxide, the same total, completely same balancing uh, as, you know, just make it here 2, so 2, 2, 4, and this has become 2, sulfur 2, so this is 3, O2. Cu2O, again, without any reducing agent, Cu2S, just heated. This is roasting, as we know, we have done in the presence of air. We get copper and we get sulfur dioxide. Again, it varies in 2 plus 2 copper, 4 copper. Okay, yes, O2 is this, so 2 years, so 2 to the 4 plus 2, 6 copper actually. And this is completely barren. This is the way how we extract the low reactive, mm, low reactive metal. Let us learn properties of ionic compounds. Uh, ionic compounds, ionic compounds soluble in water soluble in water that means they are soluble in polar solvent remember the water is polar solvent having in two ends positive and negative end and insoluble in non-polar solvent like petrol diesel kerosene etc ionic ionic compounds are solid in nature they are hard but they are brittle like easily breakable because of the presence of positive and negative or just we apply the pressure the like charges will come and they ripple because of the force like charges will come one above other and they ripple and the little application of force will break them third the ionic compounds they are good conductor they conduct the electricity they conduct electricity but only in the molten in the molten state and in the aqueous form that means in water in solution aqueous solution but not in the solid state. The reason is that yeah, ions are there, ions are there, positive and negative ions are there to conduct the electricity, but they are not free to move, so they cannot conduct the electricity in solid. So ions are present, but they are not free to move to conduct the electricity, so they do not conduct electricity in solid state. One more, the you know they are hard, yeah, they are hard, brittle, solid. Ionic compounds are soluble in water. That is what polar solvent in petrol and diesel they are insoluble because it is a non-polar solvent. They conduct the electricity in molten state and in the aqueous solution but not in the solid state as you know the reason that because ions are not free to move in solid so they can't. Last point, their melting point and boiling point is too high. Yeah obviously expected because these are the for example sodium plus and chlorine there is a strong electrostatic force of attraction because of that to break this bond they need to supply the large amount of energy so their melting and boiling point is high and the same reason that they are in solid nature because the electrostatic force of attraction is more so the you know atoms will be very close to each other and you know the which state of matter having atoms very close to each other that is what solid
Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe and share. Thank you.